All right, hello everyone. I hope everyone had a good weekend. We're back for another home office workout. I'm Brendan Boyle, physical therapist with Performance Physical Therapy. Today we're gonna to be doing a workout that's focused on shoulder pain. Um, this is meant to help out with a lot of different causes of shoulder pain, so not very specific to any type of injuries you might have. So this should help with a wide range of problems. And it's gonna help um, <clears throat> to address some of the issues you can have in surrounding muscles, um, not just the shoulder muscles. So we're gonna start with a couple stretches that were um, that are pretty applicable to a lot of different um, a lot of different conditions. So some of these stretches at the beginning might be a little bit of a repeat from what we did before, but they're still worthwhile to do. So we'll do those stretches and then we'll get into some strengthening exercises that we haven't done that can help with some of the supporting muscles to take some strain off of the shoulder. So a lot of times when we have issues with our shoulder, we're gonna create some movement patterns that aren't ideal. So basically, if I wanna reach overhead, it should look like this. If I have shoulder pain, I might hunch a little bit. I might kind of move my arm around. I might not come straight up or straight to the side. I might kind of find a way to work around those painful areas. And all that's gonna do, especially with that hunching, it's gonna overactivate that upper trap muscle. So that's a muscle that we've stretched a few times before, and we're gonna start by stretching that again. So for, uh, for a little bit of a review, or if you weren't um, with us for some of the workouts that we stretched this muscle, the upper trap is a muscle that starts on the side of the shoulder here, on the back side, comes up, kind of this crease in between the shoulder and the neck, and it runs all the way up the back of the neck and attaches on the, uh, pretty much the base of the skull. So. What we want to do to stretch that muscle is we can either put our arm behind our back or we can just hold on to the chair here. That's to make sure that the shoulder doesn't pop up when we stretch away. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch to the side. We'll hold that for 30 seconds. We'll do three times. I know this is a little bit of a repeat from what we've done before, but making sure that our upper trap muscle is calms down and not, um, not overactive it's really gonna help with any type of shoulder pain. Normally when your shoulders move, you have a combination of movement from the ball and socket and from the shoulder blade itself, kind of rotating up or sliding forward or back um, as your arm moves. And let's switch sides here. So we'll stretch the other side. We'll do three reps for 30 seconds on each side. So basically you have those combinations of movements between the upper, um, between the what we call the glenohumeral joint, so that's your ball and socket, but then also your scapula thoracic joint, so where your shoulder blade attaches into the, um, to the rib cage. And it's not attached by any ligaments or joints, it's just muscles that hold it on there. Um, one of those muscles is your upper trap muscle, so we'll switch sides. Um, and it's the one that tends to do most of the work, but normally to have your shoulder um, rotate upward as you reach overhead, and provide some clearance so things don't get compressed and irritated in the shoulder, you actually need your upper trap, your middle trap, your lower trap, so all parts of the same muscle, and, your, uh, and another muscle called the serratus anterior to all work together to kind of pivot that muscle instead of having it, you know, slide up, but then also ride upwards or um, not ride upwards enough. So you really need that, what we call a force couple to work together so you can create some clearance so when that ball and socket comes up like that, it's not crashing into the, um, to another part of the shoulder blade called the acromion, which can cause some impingement of the rotator cuff. Um, but there are also movement dysfunctions that can cause issues with you know, your labrum. Um, you can have, if you have arthritis in the shoulder, um, having, that, having bad what we call scapulohumeral rhythm can really mess up the, um, the way that your shoulder is moving and create abnormal stress and strain that can also flare you up if you're having a bit of arthritis in the, um, in the shoulder joint. So we'll hold this for a little bit longer and then we'll do one more stretch on each side. So we'll start just with two stretches and then we'll do a few strengthening exercises. So this is the first of the, uh, first of the two. So as always with our stretches, moderate intensity, 
Um, we want to make sure that we can hold that stretch for 30 seconds and if we needed to we could go longer. Should feel a little bit looser after stretching with the correct intensity. You don't want to feel sore or uncomfortable. And we'll switch and we'll do one more rep on the other side. Even if we have shoulder pain on one side, we want to make sure that we're stretching both sides. And when we're doing our strengthening exercises, to the best of our ability, we want to do those on both sides because we want to work things symmetrically. Um, if we really only focus on one side and that one side gets very flexible and very strong, then we're going to create muscle imbalances in the other direction, which can open us up to the potential of an overuse injury on the other side. So the next thing we need to do, we're going to grab a towel. I'm going to use this blanket here, but you can use a bath towel or a beach towel. And basically, you want to roll that up to about this size. We're going to do a thoracic extension exercise. So another motion that allows for full clearance of that shoulder blade so we can get up overhead and reach without pain <clears throat> is thoracic extension, so backwards. Um, this is a really common problem area for office workers because we're sitting on our computers forward all day. Even if we have the right ergonomic setup, a lot of people tend to just hunch those shoulders forward accentuate that already natural curve in the upper back that curves forward um, and then we can get stiff in that position. So we don't necessarily need you to be able to bend really far backwards but we want you to be able to get upright and even in a normal resting position we're going to have a little bit of a curve in our thoracic spine in the upper back but we want to make sure that that curve is normal and that we can move around within that normal posture without expending too much energy and if we're very tight we're going to have to expend a lot of energy to fight against that tightness. So our towel is going to be right up in the upper back. It doesn't have to be exact. I have it in the area of my shoulder blades. And then I'm going to arch backwards here. I'm going to hold this for 10 seconds. We can do that 10 times. All right, so a couple things to watch out for here. I'm crossing my arms here, but I want to make sure my neck doesn't get involved. I see people do this a lot with this exercise. And if we do this every time, we're going to maybe develop some neck soreness. If it's comfortable to do so for your shoulders, you can cross your fingers like this and get them behind your neck. So then you're kind of forcing yourself. Even if I try to move back, I can't get into that full neck extension where I'm really cranking on the neck there. All right, I'm going to adjust this up a little bit more. One other thing to watch out for is the low back. If I come backwards like this and my upper back gets really stiff and I reach the end of my motion, I can go further, but you can see my low back is moving away from the uh, chair here. So normally I should be back like this, and then I come back. This is where I feel about the end of my motion, and then I have my hand behind my back. You'll be able to see it kind of pop out there as I lift my, my low back away. So make sure your low back is touching the back of the chair. We're coming up and back like that. You should feel some pressure, tension in the upper back, and that's about it. You might not feel a stretch like uh, that traditional muscle stretch that we felt when we were stretching our upper trap. That's because we're mobilizing the segments of the spine here. Um, there are muscles that connect each segment of the spine. They're a little bit smaller, uh, but if we're also mobilizing the joint, you might feel a little bit more of a pressure or tension feeling rather than a familiar pulling that you would feel with a muscle stretch. All right, let's do one more rep. And then we'll get into a couple light strengthening exercises. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, the next exercises we're going to do are going to help train some of those muscles that sometimes are a little bit underactive if our upper trap is doing too much work. So, I'm going to grab my weights here. These are two pound weights. Um, a good place to start with this, if our shoulder is in pain, is to start actually with no weight and just use our arm against the weight of gravity. You'll see what I mean. Um, or if you have a water bottle, which is like a regular, you know, kind of pulling springs water bottle you get in the big pack, that's about a pound if it's full. So you can fill that up and do a one pound weight as well. So we're going to do an exercise that's going to help us activate our lower trap and our mid trap, trying to keep our upper trap relaxed while we do those motions. And we're going to call these exercises a Y and a T. I'm going to do this from a hands and knees position, so I just want to make sure. I'm not arched up high like this. I'm not sagging down like this. Nice neutral back. 
Um, if this position is hard for you to keep, you can actually lay down on the floor like this. And if getting down on the floor is painful or just difficult to do, you can actually lie on your bed and do this. So you can lie on the bed with your arm towards the edge, kind of hanging down um, off the edge of the bed like that. And the first motion we're going to do is called a Y. So I'm going to do one arm at a time. I want to make sure that I'm coming out at a 45 degree angle here, kind of like I'm making half of the letter Y. And I'll show you a few reps from this position and then a few reps from, a, uh, from another angle so you can see what exactly I'm doing here. But I want to make sure as I come up, I'm trying to pin my shoulder down. So if I come up and my shoulder shrugs up towards my ear, this is what that's going to look like. I want to make sure my shoulder staying right where it is and as the arm comes up, I'm maybe even pulling my shoulder blade back like that. I'm, um, I'm exaggerating that so it's a little easier to see. You really just want to make sure as you come up, you want to feel like that shoulder blade, if it's sitting on top of my back, is sliding backwards a little bit as I come up. And let's do a set of 10 this way and then I'll turn so you can see me from the front view. We'll do a set of 10 the other way. You want to make sure on this hand you're just relaxing. I have my hand in a fist here because it can bother my wrist if I'm like this, so that's a modification we can make. I've also had people who have issues putting pressure directly on the fist kind of hold a pillow or get a, get a uh, yoga mat rolled up over here. So whatever you need to do to um, pad, that, pad that contact area. So let's do the other side. I'm going to do my right side. So when I'm doing this exercise here, I'm coming out to the side like this, like I'm making half of the letter Y. I'm still feeling those upper back muscles kind of pinching, pulling that shoulder blade down like I'm trying to pull my shoulder blade down towards my hip. And for an exercise like this, if we're working the right muscles, you should feel some fatigue, even with a light weight. We're isolating some muscles that typically are pretty weak, so you don't have to do a lot to feel them start to burn. Um, one other way I'll just show you here, one more set. If I have pain here um, in that quadruped position, I can do my Y like this, but it's a much smaller movement. So that's what that would look like. So what I would do is I would pull up, pull my shoulder blade down and back as I lift my arm, and I can do it that way. It's really a matter of personal preference though. We'll do one more set on the other side. In this, you might not feel a big muscle burn in that lower trap which is kind of in your uh, mid to upper back, you might feel it mostly in your deltoid, this muscle here in the shoulder. If I have pain with this, I just don't go as high. Maybe this is as far as I can get before it hurts. You're not really doing much for yourself if you're pushing through a lot of pain with this exercise. You kind of want to find what your shoulder can do on its own and then work just up to that limit but not past it. And then with time, as we do these exercises, it should get easier and easier. And you should be able to move further and further. Um, the next one I'm gonna do, um, actually we'll just stick with one weight for now, is called the T. So instead of coming up like I'm making the letter Y, I'm just gonna come to the side like I'm making the letter T. Instead of trying to pull my shoulder blade down towards my hip, I'm trying to pull it straight across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate here. When I'm lifting up like this, I want my thumb pointing up towards the ceiling that's gonna help reduce any amount of shoulder impingement I get with this exercise. And I'm gonna come up like that. I'm trying to get my shoulder blade to pull across towards the other shoulder blade when I do this. I'm also making sure that I'm not shrugging up. So you really wanna make sure your arm is coming horizontal instead of riding up like this. We already did the Y to start, so we don't need to work towards that direction. This is a exercise where we might, again, feel it mostly in our deltoid, but we should, or we could potentially feel it in our upper back. Or if we're working these muscles, we might not feel that traditional muscle burn, that's fine as well. So, from this side view, come up to the side here, just like that, thumbs pointing up. If I'm doing this without weight, I look like this, not like this, that actually, 
Press a little bit, even without any weight. So you come up like that. If I'm doing this the wrong way, my shoulder's gonna start to shrug up. It's gonna look like that. I'm kind of hunching my shoulder. So I just want to make sure I'm keeping that shoulder down and back. It's a good position to keep the shoulder in. Good. Let's do one more set on each side. If you have two weights, you can even alternate with this one. So maybe we'll do one more set alternating like that. So if we're following along, let's keep going. But you could do this on both sides here if you had the weights at home. Thumbs pointing up is going to be a little bit easier. So if you want to do this lying down, you can lie facing down like that and do the same thing. Or you could do the same thing. Lying off the edge of the bed, you might need to do one side at a time. Chest is on the mattress, arms hanging off the edge of the bed. And you can go to the side like that. All right. And then just one last exercise we can do, maybe another stretch to kind of cool things down a little bit. Because I know my deltoids are actually a little tired just from doing that. That's not an exercise I do often. Another stretch we can do, as long as it's not painful, is a posterior capsule stretch for the shoulder. Posterior meaning on the back side of the shoulder. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take the arm we wanna stretch, reach across, I'm grabbing the elbow or just above it, and I'm just pulling across here. And I feel the stretch on the back side of my shoulder into my upper back. If you're really tight, we can hold that for 30 seconds and do three times. Um, we're doing this more as like a little bit of a cool down, so we can do it more as like a dynamic stretch, kind of like we did before, where you reach across, maybe a little bit of overpressure. And we're doing this more just to keep moving. If we do an exercise that's tough, and then we just sit down and do nothing after, we can get some delayed onset muscle soreness, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing, but it definitely doesn't feel good. So if we have you know, all these byproducts built up from the workout that we're doing and it's in the muscle here, we wanna make sure we're doing something that keeps the blood flowing so we can take those waste products away and bring in fresh blood that can help with recovery from the workout. I would recommend doing these exercises um, if we have a shoulder problem, maybe other, every other day or every third day, um, just because if, especially with those ones, you might get a little bit of soreness to start. You wanna wait till that soreness dissipates before you do that again. Um, and I think that's good for now. We got a couple stretches. You know, We're stretching out the upper trap, stretching the upper back. We stretch this as a cool down. You could do this as a warm up stretch as well, as long as there's no pain. Sometimes we might get some pain on the top of the shoulder with that. But then we did our Y's and our T's, which you could do from a quadruped position like I did. You could do from a prone position, which is just lying face down on the floor, but that really limits the amount of motion and it's a little bit tougher. Or you can do that lying uh, off the edge of your bed and just doing one arm at a time with the arm falling down towards the floor. Um, as always, if you have any requests for topics I should cover uh, later on this week, just leave it. I'll read the comments and if there's any prevailing um, topics that people want to see, I'll be able to um, be able to address those later in the week. So that's it for now. We'll be back again at noon tomorrow for another home office workout, um, focusing on another body area.